Hello again, welcome back to another episode. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Dear Zachary, a letter to his son about his father, um, which is a, a documentary made in the uh, early 2010s, but events that happened much earlier in the early 2000s in Canada and America. Now this is a documentary film and it's pretty devastating, it's pretty, it's really hard to watch in some ways but it is really worth it because it is very moving and very a dark look at um, craziness in, in the American landscape but in a very humane way, it's not trying to be exploitative in any way, there's uh, not any gruesomeness, it's about the horrors of what, the damage left to people who have a family members affected by violence. So, um, it's shot uh, by a filmmaker who was friends with a murder victim uh, who grew up with this guy called Andrew Bagley who was a, a doctor, very nice guy, everyone liked him. He was working away at his job and he was, um, he had a kind of, um, he had a, had a, he had a engagement which, which didn't work so after that he just went through his, in his um, life as a family doctor um, and just working up and getting his qualifications worked out and then at a certain point he is shot and killed in a park and everyone can pretty much see who killed him because he was seeing this woman and he'd called it off this woman who was in her early 40s who was a doctor and who had had been divorced a few times, had signs of something was not quite right with her. But it was like, um, and the view was, uh, he sent her away and told her, look, it's not working, we just have to move on. And and just like, find someone else, we're not, not a good couple. And in response, she killed him. You know, I mean, there's, there was no other person they were looking at as the killer. It was her. Everyone knew it was her. She was in the area. She drove from Bristol Avenue, Newfoundland, down to the place in America, shot and then drove back. And they had all, everyone had proof she'd done it. There was phone call stuff. Unfortunately, she returned to Newfoundland before they could arrest her. So they had to extract her. At this point, it turns out she's pregnant with the son of the butter victim. So the family had to go up there, the two parents, and this guy was the only child, so they didn't have any other children. So, they, 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 when the son died, they felt their lives were over, because it was like, well, what do we do now? The son's dead. That's, that's the thing about suicide, they were so devastated. They go to Newfoundland to try and deal legally about how, how to deal with the child when it's born and also try and push to make sure that she's extradited back to the United States to actually get justice for the death of their son. And the story becomes about what happens in Canada where she gets much, this person who's actually viewed as, a, as the only viable murder suspect of this guy is allowed to go out and bail. So the process was long. It should have been pretty simple. She's a va she's a valid murder suspect in this case, send her back. You know, we are, cause basically there were people ready to look after the baby once she was, baby was born. It was not going to be a complicated situation. It was easy, send her back, we'll try her and see if she's guilty or not and see if she can prove she's guilty. And everyone kind of knew she was guilty. But that get delayed and delayed and delayed because of the Canadian legal system and also because she's blowed him out in bail, she, she can look after the child, even though she's a murder suspect of the father. And the family, to actually access the child, had to interact with the person who killed their son. And that was pretty horrible. That's, that's just something that should not have to happen. There should be some middle person. The lawyers try to deal with it to try and make it as limited contact as possible. But they're dealing with someone who's obviously, obviously crazy but who would act sane at certain points to manipulate people. And as the film goes on, she's sent to jail for a bit until the extradition goes through. Then she's, um, so, the, so the family get 
access to the child full time and they have to take her see the child take the child to see her in prison once a week as part of the deal. Then um when she's released for some reason because she does a sob story with the judge, she gets the child back. And then when everything starts to like, go wrong, she kills herself and the child. Which is a devastating sequence and it's just like it's horrific. Cause the film at that point was this guy making a video about for the child about his father so he knows who his father actually was and what his father was interested in. And that was the point of the film. He was making this big film for the child of his father, of his son, but the child of his friend, so he can understand his dad. That was it. Then when the child died, it was like everyone's devastated. It's like the family's appalled. They cannot believe what's happened. The, the, the legal system allowed this person to have access to the child even though she was obviously insane. They'd let this case drag on forever. But all they do was send her back to face consequences. So it became a thing about the parents actually deciding to actually use, to focus, instead of actually um, giving up, they decided to focus on the legal system and the people who let down there's Zachary who was the son who was drowned by his mother when she turned herself and use this case as an example of how this stuff cannot happen again and it becomes this movie story of these people surviving the worst horrible circumstances to actually try and make the system work better so it doesn't happen again so it's a very moving film and and a lot of it is taken up by what would be called home movies. Like you get um, people talking to the camera well before they know what's actually going to happen in life. Like they're talking to Zachary thinking he will see this when he grows up, not, know, not, not knowing that he will die as a one year old. I mean, he was one when his mother killed herself and killed him. A one year old, she did that to a one year old. Instead of letting him have his life and actually Aiming the rage at herself where it was belonged, she actually let the boy kill the boy as well, which should not happen. So they take the so the grandparents who are like the main, who are the focus of the film essentially take the rage because they both feel rage about it, even though they're very nice people, they both feel rage to try and actually change the system and make people pay for their inaction their bad mistakes and actually make sure this does not happen again. And the film itself became a lightning rod. The film and a book that the, the, the grandparent wrote became a lightning rod to change the law in our calendar so this would not happen again. But the whole story is about these whole movies, about these people and going seeing how they interacted with Zachary while he was alive and how they were they're through hell having to deal with this woman who killed her son, their only son, to try and get access to their grandchild, to try and Make sure he was saved and how all just went to hell. All because the legal system was didn't protect him, didn't protect the child, didn't protect anything. They actually placed the uh, focus on keeping the mother okay, the mother who was a killer. It's a really devastating movie. I mean, the first third is a bit amateurish. First third that tells you about the father and of all this amateurish footage. And as you're watching, I'm thinking, that's okay, but. It's nothing great, but as the story starts to unfold, once he dies, and you start to see the reaction of the people who all loved him and how devastated they were by that, and then how the process of dealing with this woman and having to deal with a woman who was a killer of the son, and the human interactions that take place, that's when the film really hits pay dirt because it's, it's about grief and it's about how you process grief and how you process damage in your life and how you try and survive it and how a death actually affects people because in most movies a death is just a death and it's fake, no one cares. In this one it's, a, it's about that, it's about how one death can affect the entire community because this person was liked by lots of people and who all really cared about him and all were really devastated when he died so it becomes a story about what does a life, what does a death do to a community and what does a bunch of deaths do to a community when more deaths occur because there's one person who should have uh, been dealt with by the legal system a lot earlier. So it's a devastating film because you're going to be angry at the Canadian legal system, you're going to be angry 
at the women, because it's a, it's a look at a sociopath who didn't care about the damage she caused, she was just in her own head. What is everyone doing to me? Rather than what am I doing to other people? What damage am I doing to other people? It's about the selfishness of a narcissist who doesn't understand her own damage, who just views everything in the lens of what happens to her rather than what the consequence of my actions to other people. So it's it's a wonderful film. I highly recommend watching it. It will be tough going, but it's worth it. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be back soon with some more. Right, bye for now.